In today's video, we are going to put Silhouette Studio to the test. We design in Silhouette Studio and use it to run our Silhouette machines, the cameos and the portraits and the curios, all of that, of course. And a lot of us use it to design for our sublimation projects as well. Today, we're going to take it one step further. We're going to manipulate the file, send it over to the Xtool software and see how smoothly that goes as well. I just added the Xtool to my personal collection of crafting machines and so far I am loving it. If you have thought about investing in a laser engraver, I highly recommend it. It's such a natural step from the vinyl cutter to the laser cutter. You will absolutely love it, I promise. Now let's do this. Let's start in Creative Fabrica today. That's where I got this file from, and I'll link the file in the description, and I'll also put a link to a free trial for Creative Fabrica. I searched up B bookmarks and chose this one here. Just click, download, and unzip. Then in Silhouette Studio, you click on File, then Merge, and bring that new design right onto your mat. I'll be using the SVGs today. I'm going to use the whole set so I can click on all SVG and bring them in all at once. If I select all of the bookmarks and center them, it's easier to scale them to the correct size. Just organize them on the mat here. and align them all using this button here at the top. Next, we're going to create a solid layer for each design. Open up the Replicate tab and click on Row of 4, then Row of 2. This will give you a total of 6, and we'll get those spaced out. Head to the Send panel. I'm going with Cardstock Plane for the setting. And I'll send this batch through the Cameo. Here is my mat, all ready to go. I have the black cardstock on top, yellow on the bottom. Place the mat just to the right of the white guideline and load. Now these are two different types of cardstock and I'm hoping that the black will be okay with the cut settings that I chose. It's a little bit thicker than the yellow cardstock, so we shall see. Get that unloaded. You want to flip the mat over and peel the mat up and away keeping the cardstock flat on your work surface. This is going to help prevent any curling. The black layer is definitely being more difficult, but some of these cuts are pretty intricate. If you do decide to download this bundle, just know that the honeycomb pattern is kind of messed up and you're going to have to do some modifications before you can actually use it unless you're gluing it to a solid cardstock backing like I am. Now I'm just going to glue these together. I typically use spray adhesive, but I was all out, so we are going with good old Elmer's today. Just need to get all of these edges lined up and make sure all of the details are smooshed down and secured well. 
After you have everything glued, you can place a book or something on top of these and that will prevent curling. They'll be nice and flat. And I absolutely love the yellow and black together. Last one, then we'll start on getting the file ready for the laser cutter. Okay, back to the design screen. And I'm going to select all of the solid pieces and delete them. I'll be sending this batch through the Xtool M1 and I only need one layer. Group all of the pattern ones together, click on the file tab, then save selection. Save to hard drive. I'm going to save this as an SVG file on my desktop. Then all I need to do is open up the Xtool software. It is super simple to pull the file in and just start cutting. I definitely need to work on filming the laser. It is so cool to watch, but this video does not do it justice. You can see, however, that the movements are very similar to the Cameo, and I feel like if you're already using a vinyl cutter, then a laser cutter is just a very natural next step. And I am loving this new addition so far. For the third project, we're going to get these ready for sublimation. I'm grabbing a rectangle, unlocking the aspect ratio, and resizing it to fit my sublimation blanks. I'm changing the color of the rectangle, and I'm increasing the point size so that it's easier to see here. I'll center them all again to keep the sizes consistent and start scaling them down to fit. Sometimes designing and manipulating files can get a little bit messy, so bear with me for just a minute here. Once I have these to where they will fit within the rectangle, I will duplicate the rectangle and use the duplicates to crop the parts that I want to keep. I'm going to select all and drag them out just a bit on the bottom. That looks good. Now I can select a bookmark and a rectangle, open up the modify panel, and crop. I'll repeat this process for each bookmark. Now I need to add a bit of color, so I'll pull in a yellow background. This is also from Creative Fabrica. And that's way too big. OK, 
Okay, send that to the back. And I'm going to squish these together just a bit. Once I have everything where I want it, I'll group it together and get it set in place. I do need to change my media size to match my printer, so I will go ahead and select letter. Let's duplicate, set that one in place. And print. I'm using an EcoTank 3760 with Hippo Sub Ink and HTV Rot Sub Paper. And I printed two of each of the designs because my sub blanks are double sided. Okay, there's the printed design. Let's get them trimmed up and ready to press. I'll be pressing these at 365 degrees for 55 seconds. And there are the finished sublimation bookmarks. The colors turned out great. Which ones do you like best? I really can't decide. Now I am out of here. Go create something amazing and I'll see you in the next video.